This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Oh no, I need a website. What am I gonna do? Does that sound like you? If so, you need Squarespace, my friend. Coding, HTML, all that scary stuff. I don't know how to do any of that, doesn't matter. With Squarespace, all I had to do was pick a template, I tweaked it a little bit to meet my needs, and I was done. Now, managing my website and posting content is exceptionally easy. Text editing is easy, you can embed pictures and social media posts, videos and all that. I can have my posts automatically push to my Twitter, I can schedule posts for later, it's all super easy. And if I ever need more, Squarespace offers a ton of powerful extensions and my favorite, analytics. I love keeping track of who's coming to my website, where they're coming from, all that good stuff. To try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. And now for today's recommendation, apple cider vinegar specifically for heartburn. I know it seems weird to treat acid with more acid, but look it up, there's a science behind it and it's changed my life. Antacids make the problem worse in the long run, but drink some water with a dash of vinegar and it helps a ton. You can even get pills. I use the pills all the time. I get mine at Costco. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now, on with the video. Hey, look. This is a petty video. Okay, <laughs> let's, just, let's just come right out and say it. This video is petty. It is unnecessary. It is nitpicky. Uh, I, I am essentially attacking a beloved industry legend and that is just not something that needs to be done. But you know what, now that you know that, now, now, now that you understand the nature of this video, it is your choice if you want to engage with it or not. Therefore, I cannot be blamed for wasting anyone's time. You are here because you want to hear me complain about a thing, okay? Good. <laughs> Got that out of the way, so let's complain. So Shigeru Miyamoto has been doing all sorts of interviews and stuff because the uh, the Mario movie is coming very soon. And in a recent interview, he alleges to have clarified his stance on stories in games. You know, he's developed something of a reputation over the years of being anti-story. And uh, he, he wanted to put an end to that. So here's what he said. First of all, it's not that complex stories are unnecessary, that's not what I'm saying at all. Story is one way of explaining a game. For example, when there's an interactive game, the experience for everyone is different. One of the most enjoyable things about a PC or a computer is that it provides the same thing to everybody. That interesting aspect is something you have to keep pulling out as you keep playing and keep playing and keep playing. I think story is just another way to pull out enjoyment from this experience. Another way to focus on that enjoyment is to focus on a gameplay experience that gets you to try things over and over again. As I mentioned, story is one way to explain the game, and when that goes well, sometimes people take the route when creating their next game of starting with the story. For me, the starting story is how to make the gameplay fun, and that's how I begin thinking about and creating a game. He says he doesn't believe that story is unnecessary, it's just that's how I create games. He's basically saying there's the story-based approach and there's the gameplay-based approach, and he prefers the gameplay-based approach. And so this article went out, and everyone nodded their heads and went, yeah, see? Yeah, see, he doesn't hate stories at all. Everything he said makes total sense. And I'm over here, like, I'm just like, I'm saying, I'm just like, I'm over here, I'm like, I'm over here like, whoa, whoa there. No, 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 you, you, you can't say he doesn't hate stories. Everything he just said was true. Those two things together do not make any sense. Miyamoto is speaking truth in this interview. He, he, he you know, talking about the, the gameplay versus story thing, that's true. That's absolutely true. But framing all of this in such a way as to suggest that he does not actually dislike stories as his reputation suggests, no, that, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. That is not the conclusion to be drawn from this interview. If that interview were the only piece of Miyamoto lore that existed, sure, I'd take it at face value, anyone would. But it does not exist in a vacuum. It exists alongside decades of evidence very much to the contrary. Miyamoto does dislike stories. 
He does. I, I, I might catch a lot of flack for this. I myself am not Miyamoto. I can't really know what goes on in his mind. Miyamoto was actually a pioneer of early stories in games, you know, like have, having a, a protagonist with a name and they're trying to rescue someone and there's a villain with a name, everyone's got a name and there's like, there's like a motivation to it. Uh, like, like as far as scenario goes, yeah, he likes a story. But beyond that, no, no, I, I mean, I mean, like, maybe he's eased up in recent years or something, but we know for a fact that he has played a big part in actively trying to keep good stories out of Nintendo's games. But let me show you what I mean. When it comes to the subject of Miyamoto, you know, quote unquote, not liking stories, the number one sore spot in all of Nintendo's history is Paper Mario Sticker Star. For three games, Paper Mario was a series that was all about having these great stories, complex stories, loads of characters. That was just a part of its identity. Then Sticker Star came along and just stripped it all away. There was no story, just none. It was the most basic, bare bones premise possible. And it's really funny because the discourse here has actually changed a lot. You know, like we were told that Miyamoto wanted them to remove the story and to stop using original characters. So we were mad at him for years and years. We were mad at him for that. But then when new Paper Mario games kept coming out, we started to realize that Kensuke Tanabe probably also deserves blame for the direction the series has gone. Maybe even most of the blame. You know, did he have to take Miyamoto's suggestions as far as he did? You know, couldn't he have still given us more than we got? But here's what's funny. Then people started swinging so hard in this new direction that now suddenly you've got people who are completely exonerating Miyamoto of any wrongdoing. When this Miyamoto article came up, I saw loads of people pushing the idea. No, Miyamoto's completely blameless. He was never against story. Tanabe is the only person who hurt Paper Mario. And this is a false narrative. <laughs> This is revisionist history. All you gotta do is go back to the original Iwata Asks interview that started all of this. There were two main things that Miyamoto-san said from the start of the project. It's fine without a story, so do we really need one? and as much as possible, complete it with only characters from the Super Mario world. He said it in a way that it's fine without a story, so do we really need one? It's Miyamoto. Everybody knows that you do what Miyamoto says <laughs> at Nintendo. He always calls the shots. That was not a suggestion. That was just him. That was, that was him establishing the mission statement. And from the very start of the project, the bones of the project, he said it didn't need a story. He felt that not having a story was the foundation of this new Paper Mario. Again, a series with an identity almost entirely defined by story. And sure, it must be noted that this decision could have been in response to the infamous Super Paper Mario survey, which is mentioned here in this interview. Uh, apparently, people who took the survey said they didn't care about the story. Like less than 1% of people said they cared about the story in Super Paper Mario. We can see, we have logic. So we can see, you and I can see, something about this survey was flawed. Like, any, even back then, anyone could have told you. No, no. Maybe it's something to do with the skewed demographics of the people who were taking these surveys, or a glitch in the mainframe, or just something like that, I don't know. But any Paper Mario fan can tell you that a Paper Mario without a story is nonsense, that's a nonsense idea. To believe that story is not needed is to have a deep, deep misunderstanding of what the series even is and what people are getting from it. And I kind of feel like that opinion can only really come from a person who is staunchly anti-story. Otherwise, they would have known how ridiculous that was and not even considered it. Even back then, even around Super Paper Mario, whatever, you go anywhere, anyone is talking about Paper Mario, ask them what they think about the idea of a new game, but without a story, those people would laugh in your face because it's just that absurd. Okay, so Sticker Star is the classic example. Interpret that however you want, but this, this right here, this is when we get 
into the real darning evidence. And this is all the stuff I've talked about before. All of this is, but who cares if we're talking about it again? Yoshiaki Koizumi. Yes, I'm doing my Yoshiaki Koizumi rant. I love doing my Yoshiaki Koizumi rant. <laughs> I could do it every day. This man is one of the men running Nintendo. And I don't think I'm alone in wishing that he was the man running Nintendo. He understands that gameplay first and story first are two different ways to come at a game, but he also understands that when you're playing to a large audience, you want to please fans of both perspectives. Some people, players, customers, some of them are gameplay first, some of them are story first. And if you're running a business, which these people are, the best way to reach both types of people are to give them both gameplay and story. When it comes to Nintendo's, you know, primary, traditional, tentpole, first party series, you Mario's, you Zelda's, you know, so many of the fun and interesting creative scenarios we've gotten over the years have been thanks to this man. Link's Awakening is a beloved classic, primarily because of its story and scenario. And he literally snuck most of it into the game, like secretly. Miyamoto did not want it there. He actively unwanted it in the game. He wanted it to just be like Link to the Past, but on Game Boy, that's what he wanted. But why, why would he not want it there? Can you think, what's the reason? I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to come up with a reason. Why could he not see that this stuff was interesting and would just make the game objectively better? Well, the only reasonable explanation I can see is that he's anti-story. <laughs> He ended up disliking what Koizumi did with Link's Awakening, even after the fact, despite the fact that every single other human being on this earth loved it. That's not all though. Then there's the other weird extra creative fan favorite Zelda, Majora's Mask. They brought Koizumi on out of pure desperation. They needed to get the game done in a year. And he said, okay, I'll do it, but you gotta let me do whatever I want. So they said, okay. And that weird, creepy, amazing game is the game that we ended up with. That is what happens when you let the story be what it wants to be. And you don't only focus on gameplay. You get timeless classics when you do that. Then another great example, Super Mario Galaxy. Everyone loves the Rosalina storybook. It's the backbone of the game's story. It's what gives the player so much motivation. It turns the game into this delightful, magical narrative experience. And he had to sneak it into the game against Miyamoto's wishes. He had to sneak it in. Miyamoto didn't want it, and because of that, Miyamoto made sure that in the sequel there was as little story and actual motivation as possible. Strip it all away, it's all gone in Super Mario Galaxy 2. And this is not all speculation. These, th these are, this is official <laughs> information. Koizumi himself said this in an interview. You're right, EAD, EAD is uh, Nintendo's primary development studio. EAD doesn't tend to focus on the big story in most of their games, but I was the one coming up with the scenarios just on my own ever since the time of Link's Awakening. But even at that time, I felt like I came up with this entire scenario and a backstory for Link but nobody really seemed to care. They were always saying, let's not try to push the story forward too much. So I would sort of try to find sneaky ways to get it in without them noticing too much. A lot of the EAD games that do seem to have a lot of story, a lot of that came from my influence. But those are aspects of the games that Miyamoto wasn't nearly as fond of and occasionally didn't like. We tend to not only gravitate to these little stories in Nintendo games, we savor them. We love them obsessively. So many of Nintendo's games over the years would not have endured to nearly the same degree without their unique stories. Those stories haven't been super deep or anything, no. And it is true. Gameplay, to a degree, should come first. Gameplay is incredibly important. A good story ain't worth much without that good gameplay. And it's true that not every series needs to have loads and loads of deep story. We've covered this a million times now, but usually, not always, but usually, games do need that little 
extra something special, you know? It is so easy to see how that little extra something affects a game's success and enduring legacy. It is an objective fact that it's important. In a lot of cases, if not most cases, it is an objective fact. When looking at the greater market and what that market usually responds to, it is important. And the only way you can't see that is if you are anti-story. It's, it's the only way. You, you have to not only be anti-story yourself in terms of your own tastes and, and design philosophies, but you also have to look and see how the vast majority of your paying audience does not agree with you and say, I don't care, <laughs> you know? Because that's what Miyamoto does. He is against stories and games. He's proven that time and time again. All right, just how, how about just one more beating a dead horse, broken record example. Okay, Star Fox, cool game, awesome. Time for a sequel. What's the story? Eh, just tell the same story again. It doesn't matter. Not important. Years later, okay, finally time for a modern Star Fox. What's the story? Eh, just tell the same story again. Who cares? No one in the world would be okay with that decision except for someone who is anti-story. Even people who don't care that much about story are still probably gonna see the value in giving the story the care it deserves, which is just some, some, literally, any at all. Even from a purely cynical business perspective, anyone could see that that is what your audience is going to want. This illustrates not just an indifference to story. No, that comes from someone who actively dislikes stories. That's not gameplay first. That's gameplay only. And that is really all I wanted to say. <laughs> I just, I'm not gonna let Miyamoto hand wave away years of this stuff with one interview. I'm gonna grump about it. <sighs> okay, okay, I'm done. Uh, well, uh, I'm gonna go. And uh, as always, when I spend too much time talking about Miyamoto and stories, I have to try really hard not to think about all the incredible stories we could have had all these years, all the medium quality games that could have been great, all the great games that could have been even better, because if I do that enough, I will cry. <laughs> <laughs>